Do you guys remember those ads? You wouldn't download a car? Well, let me introduce you to Thingverse, a website not dedicated to printing cars, but at least very helpful for printing car parts, assuming the website wants to load. No joke, I went to record this video, the website wouldn't load, so... Two hours later. Welcome back. Here's three things we're using Thingverse for today. We're going to download something and print it without changing a thing. We're going to download a template that we then modify. And lastly, we're going to create something from scratch and upload it to benefit the same community that helped us with the first two things. My car comes with removable cup holders. Well, it comes with three slots for cup holders, but only two cup holders. How much does an extra removable cup holder cost? Seriously? Approaching $100 once we factor in taxes and shipping? Don't think so. We're going to print one for this video, and then off camera, later this week, I'm going to print two more, and then sell the two that came with the car, and profit just under $200. It's not quite a monthly payment on the car, but it's getting there. Another way to think of it is, if you don't have a 3D printer, that $200 gets you most of the way there. To download a file off Thingiverse, you have a staring contest with the ad for about five seconds. I think he's going to blink first. You unzip the download, open up the STL, and put it in our slicer. The default nozzle profiles are generally okay, but I like to customize my settings. I'm printing in PETG with a 0.4mm nozzle for a bit finer detail than on my 0.6 or 0.8mm nozzles. Because this is PETG, we're going to need a higher nozzle temperature and we're going to have to heat up the build plate. A few hours later, we have our cup holder. Thanks, MechaGen, who remixed this from Tyler Watt 12. Printed in Ziltec Cobalt Blue Metallic for this test piece, however, future ones will be in PETG. There aren't many good places to put your phone in this car and still have access to the touchscreen of your phone, depending on if that's even legal in your state or not. Despite one of my most popular videos on this channel being a guide on how to add Android Auto to your car, I find myself not wanting Android Auto in my latest vehicle. For a few reasons. I find myself not using it since I have live traffic updates through XM Radio in my car, so there's that. Plus, Android Auto will not let me get the most out of my YouTube Premium that I pay for. I specifically download WAN Show and the Level 1 News so that I have hours of podcast to listen to in the car. And on top of that, my LG V-Series phone has a above-average DAC so that whenever I'm using the headphone jack, yes, those are still a thing, the audio coming out of it is actually pretty decent quality, and I'm throwing away that potential music quality in my high-end stereo when I use it through USB and rely on the head unit to perform that digital-to-analog conversion. Quick side note, if you want to charge via USB in your car but not get prompted for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay every time you plug in the phone or you have a dash cam, that you have to immediately put in record mode instead of mass storage mode every time you turn on the car, then pick up a USB data blocker. Link in the description. Thanks to just searching my vehicle's model name, we find this template by RD Sale for mounting stuff to the dashboard. I started by printing the template on its own, unmodified, just to make sure it fit. And this one was actually a little tight, and I had to lengthen it by about four, four and a half millimeters. Now that I had a good template, it's time to add on to it in 3ds Max, my software of choice, but you can follow along in Fusion 360 or whatever you're comfortable with. So here I have the file imported in 3ds Max, and I just go ahead and lengthen that four and a half millimeter ish. That's one of the things I love most about 3ds Max is you can just guesstimate where things are and not have to move things super precisely unless you want to. So we're going to stand it up on end just to make things easier to work with. I'm going to center the object purely for OCD reasons. We're going to go ahead and actually move the object and not just its 
center. Looks like we need to rotate them about five or so degrees. That looks like five or so degrees. And we're going to get that foot just a little bit below the center line. And instead of rotating them, I'm just going to create a box here, select our mount, compound objects, so we can Boolean, which is how you add and subtract things together. And we're going to subtract this guy off the bottom, leaving us with a flat build surface. We shaved off just a little bit of this object, not enough to affect the structural integrity. If you have a ruler with millimeters on it, I know Americans were using metric, or a set of calipers, go ahead and grab your phone. First thing you're going to do is measure the width. My phone in its case is 82 millimeters wide at its widest point. 13 millimeters. And I'm not going to go all the way up the sides of my phone. Um, I'm only going to go up as high as the lowest button on the side of my phone, if that makes sense. So that you can drop your phone into it, but still have access to all the buttons. And for me, that's about 60 millimeters. I like to color code my things that I've measured in yellow. And I'm going to make this dark blue. I use green and blue for things that I'm adding together. While we work on the phone mount, I'm going to hide or just make invisible that mounting bracket. So now that we have this phone template, I'm going to copy this block just so we have another one that's already centered in roughly the right spot. And we are going to make it three millimeters wider on the sides. So that would make it 88 millimeters wide. And we are going to make it four millimeters thicker in total. So that gives us 17. And we need to make this three millimeters taller so that we can then lower it by three millimeters. And this is going to be our piece that we start with. I'm going to make it green. And I'm going to make this guy just a little bit taller so that he's easier to grab. So we can select these guys now that they're poking through each other. There's always something to grab onto. To make an opening for the screen, I'm going to copy what we have measured. I'm going to make him a little less wide. Let's say three millimeters shorter on the sides. So 76 and I'm going to bring him forward. So you can see here that now we have this grabbing around the edge of our phone and solidly across the back. We're going to eat out this yellow and just keep the green. What you can do is raise this so you have a little bit of a lip on the bottom, but you don't really need to with most phones. What most phones do have is some kind of a port, like a microphone, a USB cable, or a speaker on the bottom. So now what we need to do is make some slots for that. We're going to copy our base phone here. We're going to make him negative 10 millimeters. And I'm going to go ahead and color code him red for subtraction just to help keep things more organized. So you've got yellow for original and red for all our derivatives that we're subtracting. Now here's where you need to get precise with your calipers. The USB Type-C port on my phone is close enough to centered that I can use that as a centering point. That USB Type-C area plus a little bit extra width so I can fit a wide USB-C connector in the future and my microphone's right next to it. So I'm going to leave 24 millimeters there for my microphone and USB-C cable. And then my headphone jack, I need a hole that is 12 millimeters wide, 24 millimeters away from the center. So make a copy, have him 24 off and 12 wide. And just like that, you have a basic mount for your phone. 
I always like to make a copy of everything before I start doing any adding or subtracting. I'm going to select the green, compound objects. The difference between Boolean and Pro Boolean is that Pro Boolean will get rid of unnecessary edges as you're working on the mesh. So it just leaves a much cleaner, easier to edit finished product. I'm going to subtract out the phone, the access for the screen, microphone and USB C the speaker, and the headphone jack. Going to convert it to an editable poly. Ed editable mesh is fine too, uh, but poly can be easier to patch holes in. We're going to do an STL check in the modify panel and check. No errors. So that means that there's no holes or any problems with 3ds Max. There are often problems with the way 3ds Max does uh, addition and subtraction, especially once you get past a million polygons. That blue is painfully dark. Let's make him yellow just so it's easier to see. Raise this guy back up three inches so that it's flush with the bottom. And we want these guys to overlap a bit. I don't want this gap here. I think that looks a bit tacky. So what I'm going to do is grab that face and extrude it just a little bit. Grab this edge here and move them on down right about there. And take this edge and put them right there. Of course, make a copy yet again hide everything else, and you can unhide specific objects here in your objects list. And it doesn't matter which one you select because they're both being added to each other. We're going to do union instead of subtraction. Convert it to a poly. Do another STL check. No errors. So now we can save this object as an STL and bring it into our slicer. Another benefit of 3D printing your own car parts is that you can customize even further, giving your car a greater ability to chew through lap times with a set of sharp pointy teeth, which can be found on my Thingverse page or 3dpc.xyz, my own website. Of course, with any of these modifications, make sure they are street legal and inspected by a certified mechanic. But beyond that, make sure to subscribe for more 3D printing and computer-focused content, also check out 3DPC for some cool 3D printer filament recommendations. A lot of these colors and other cool ones can be found on 3dpc.xyz.